On October 29, 2025, an interstellar comet, 3I Atlas, will make its closest approach to our Sun, just as a massive, rare coronal hole unleashes a 700,000 km per hour solar wind directly at Earth. Astronomers call this the perfect coupling. The Sun's magnetic defenses are wide open, our planet's field is primed, and a volatile alien visitor is about to dive right into the chaos. Official reports downplay the risks, but when 3I Atlas vanishes behind the Sun, scientists brace for outcomes that could redefine how we understand solar storms, cosmic debris, and Earth's own vulnerabilities. What happens when a messenger from another star system confronts our Sun at its most unstable? October 3, 2025. 30 million kilometers from the red deserts of Mars, a faint speck of motion crossed the field of the European Space Agency's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter. This was no ordinary comet. 3I Atlas, a visitor from interstellar space, had just swept past Mars at a distance of 0.19 astronomical units, a rare, measurable encounter that placed it firmly within the inner solar system's reach. For planetary scientists, this was the first concrete opportunity to pin down its path. The comet's hyperbolic trajectory, traced by ATLAS and ZTF observatories, left no doubt about its alien origin. Its speed, its angle, even the subtle drift in its coma, revealed it was not bound to the Sun. Mars orbiters, designed to study the planet's thin atmosphere, quickly adapted their cameras and spectrometers to track the ghostly haze. Against the backdrop of the Martian sky, 3 y atlas appeared as a diffuse envelope its coma brightening as it drew closer to the sun. Every image, every spectrum, became a data point anchoring the comet's course with precision. The faint signature of outgassing, already stronger than most native comets at this distance, hinted at volatile chemistry brewing beneath the crust. The flyby was more than a milestone. It established the comet's position in real time giving astronomers a moving target as it accelerated inward. For a brief window, Mars and its robotic sentinels served as the solar system's outpost, capturing an interstellar object in transit. With the clock ticking toward perihelion, 3Y slash Atlas now, now raced toward the Sun, its next act unfolding against a backdrop of solar upheaval. Three. IATLAS stands apart from every comet catalogued in the solar system, not just for its origin, but for its chemistry. Its nucleus measures less than a kilometer across, smaller than most long-period comets. Yet, its activity outpaces giants. Spectrographs from Mars orbiters and ground-based telescopes converge on the same result. Carbon dioxide is the engine. Where typical comets shed water vapor as they heat, Atlas drives off carbon dioxide at rates nearly eight times higher than its water output, releasing up to four kilograms of material every second. This is a signature more common in the frozen outskirts beyond Neptune, not among comets born in the Sun's nursery. The outgassing is relentless. As solar energy penetrates the crust, pockets of carbon dioxide sublimate directly, feeding a coma rich in organics and carbon molecules. The result is a haze of large, heavy dust grains, too massive to form a classic tail, but enough to create an asymmetric shroud that glows faintly in the near infrared. Observers note the lack of a bright sweeping tail. Instead, the coma appears lopsided, its brightness fluctuating as the nucleus rotates every 16 hours. This rapid spin churns volatile rich layers toward the surface, exposing fresh material to sunlight with each turn. Every rotation brings a new surge of activity, amplifying the comet's unpredictable behavior. For planetary scientists, the high carbon dioxide to water ratio points to a birthplace in a much colder, more distant environment than any solar system comet. The chemistry is alien, a recipe shaped by different stars, different histories. As Atlas plunges toward perihelion, its volatile inventory sets the stage for interactions with the sun that no native comet could match. As October draws to a close, 3. Iatlas accelerates toward its moment of closest approach to the Sun, perihelion on October 29, 2025. The comet's journey now enters a zone of astronomical blackout. From Earth's perspective, Atlas slips deeper into the Sun's glare each night, 
vanishing from the reach of ground-based telescopes. The only eyes left are those of spacecraft orbiting far from our planet, scanning the solar perimeter for any trace of the interstellar visitor. Atlas's coma, already unusual, continues to evolve as perihelion nears. Instead of a crisp, sunlit tail, the comet displays a sprawling shroud of heavy dust grains, each particle large enough to resist the solar wind's push. The result is a faint, asymmetric haze that refuses to sharpen into the classic arc traced by most comets. Through high-contrast imaging, astronomers note that the coma's brightness flickers in step with the nucleus's 16-hour rotation, as fresh jets erupt from sunlit fractures and then fade back into shadow. This restless activity churns the dust cloud, distorting its shape and shifting its glow from one side of the nucleus to the other. With each passing hour, the comet is drawn closer to the sun's domain, where radiation and particle storms test the limits of its fragile crust. As the solar wind intensifies, the coma's outer edges begin to blur, hinting at deeper interactions just beyond the reach of visible light. By October 28th, the Ast Isabi Bus is lost behind the solar disk, its fate hidden from direct view. For astronomers, this marks the start of a tense waiting game. Only remote solar observatories, SOHO, STEREO, Parker Solar Probe, can track what happens next. The world holds its breath, watching for any sign that Atlas has survived its plunge through the sun's magnetic gauntlet, or if it has vanished into dust and data, leaving only questions in its wake. A coronal hole is not a gap in the sun's surface, but a region where the solar atmosphere thins and magnetic field lines open outward, unanchored. Most of the sun's magnetic fields loop back onto themselves, trapping hot plasma in glowing arcs. Inside a coronal hole, those fields stretch straight into space, forming a kind of magnetic exhaust vent. In October 2025, magnetograms captured a rare trans-equatorial coronal hole, one that bridged the sun's northern and southern hemispheres. This structure is unusual, seen mostly during solar minimum, and it transforms the sun into a high-speed particle engine. Dr. Tomasa Skov, a leading solar physicist, called it a true magnetic exhaust vent. In her words, plasma doesn't just simmer here, it escapes in torrents. The field in this region measured negative and open, a configuration that allows solar wind to pour directly out at speeds clocked near 700 kilometers per second. That's 700,000 kilometers every hour, enough to reach Earth in just over two days. Data from SDO and ground-based observatories confirm the scale and orientation of the event. The open field lines, mapped in sharp relief, connected both hemispheres and aimed a broad, focused stream of charged particles straight into the inner solar system. The sheer velocity and size of this trans-equatorial hole made it a rare solar gateway, one capable of flooding the space between planets with high-speed wind. The magnetic door was wide open, and the consequences would soon reach far beyond the sun. When a high-speed solar wind stream arrives, especially one clocked at 700 kilometers per second, Earth's magnetic shield is forced into a direct contest. The Interplanetary Magnetic Field, or IMF, acts as the key. In October 2025, the IMF pointed sharply southward, holding steady near minus 12 nanotesla. That orientation matters. Earth's own magnetic field points north, so when the IMF points south, the fields run opposite. Opposite directions mean the boundaries can snap together, a process known as magnetic reconnection. The magnetic door is open, the wind is fast, and Earth stands directly in the path. Each spike in velocity, each shift in polarity, sends a ripple through the global electrical environment. Power grid operators in North America reported minute-by-minute -minute voltage fluctuations. Some utilities quietly shed load, rerouting current to avoid overloads. Satellite controllers place sensitive hardware into safe mode, bracing for sudden surges in atmospheric drag and electrical charge. Auroras flared far beyond their usual haunts painting the skies over Michigan and Maine in colors rarely seen at those latitudes. This is what experts call a perfect coupling event. The sun's energy pours into the magnetosphere with almost no resistance, 
The system is primed, so sensitive that even small changes in solar wind speed or polarity can trigger outsized effects. It's a state that leaves not just scientists, but entire industries on edge. With the magnetic gateway wide open, the question is no longer if Earth will feel the storm, but how far its effects will reach. Between October 2nd and 12th, seismographs recorded a run of magnitude 7 earthquakes circling the Pacific Rim. Tonga, Chile, the Kuril Islands, Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea, and Alaska all struck in rapid succession. Seven events in 11 days. Online, the timing set off a wave of speculation. Some pointed to the solar storm, others to the approach of 3Y slash Atlas, weaving a narrative of cosmic coincidence. But the numbers tell a different story. According to NOAA and the USGS, Earth averages about 15 magnitude 7 or stronger earthquakes every year. By mid-October, the 2025 tally stood at 14, right on pace. Clusters like this aren't rare. They're a feature of global tectonics, not an omen. Mainstream geophysics leaves little room for doubt. Decades of cross-checking seismic records against solar activity have found no reliable link. Earthquakes are driven by shifting plates, not by surges of solar wind or the path of a comet. Fringe theories, ionospheric coupling, rotational nudges have been floated, but none have survived peer review. Michael Former, a veteran seismic forecaster, puts it plainly. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. To date, no study has convincingly demonstrated that solar or geomagnetic events directly trigger earthquakes. The October cluster, striking as it appears on the calendar, falls within the boundaries of statistical chance. The conversation returns to the data. The story of 3i slash Atlas and the Sun is written in plasma, dust, and light not in tectonic aftershocks. Four possible futures wait for 3i slash Atlas as it passes behind the sun. Each leaves a distinct fingerprint in the data, long before any telescope confirms what has happened. Survival is the most straightforward outcome. In this case, Atlas reappears on schedule, its brightness curve matching pre-conjunction models. The coma remains compact, the nucleus steady, no sudden flares, no fragments, just a faint but intact interstellar visitor resuming its outbound track. This is what most comet scientists anticipate, yet it offers the least drama. Fragmentation is the wild card. If Atlas breaks apart during perihelion, coronagraphs may record a sudden spike in brightness. Multiple nuclei could drift from the glare, each trailing its own dust envelope. The light curve jumps then splits, and the comet's path becomes a scatter of debris across the solar wind. Dormancy is harder to spot. Here the comet survives, but its activity collapses. The coma dims, perhaps vanishing altogether. Only a faint, inert body emerges. No jets, no haze. Just a silent relic drifting away from the sun the most abrupt fate is total disintegration. In this scenario, Atlas simply fails to reappear. No nucleus, no fragments, only a fading dust trail or a flash of sodium emission marks where it once was. Each scenario carries its own diagnostic. A light curve plateau, a fragmentation spike, a sodium flare, or a sudden irretrievable silence. Instruments like SOHO, STEREO, and Parker Solar Probe are primed to catch whichever signature appears first, turning the search for Atlas into a real-time test of cosmic endurance. The search began before sunrise in Hawaii as PanStar's analysts sifted through a torrent of automated alerts. Each candidate track, faint, drifting, often lost in noise, was checked against the comet's predicted path. At the same time, robotic telescopes from the Zwicky Transient Facility and amateur skywatchers across the globe joined the campaign, pooling images and photometry in real time. On November 3, 2025, a subtle streak aligned with Atlas's outbound ephemeris caught the attention of a PanStars pipeline analyst. The detection was faint, just above the system's limiting magnitude, but the motion and position matched. 
Within minutes, the find was flagged to the Minor Planet Center and cross-posted to comet tracking networks. Analysts from ZTF and amateur teams in Australia and South Africa confirmed the fragment's arc, stacking exposures to tease out the signal from background stars. Data sharing moved at the speed of the internet. Magnitude estimates, color indices, and astrometric coordinates filled Slack channels and comet forums, each entry adding confidence to the recovery. For the analyst in Hawaii, the moment was electric. A first light after weeks of blackout, a sign that Atlas had survived at least in part. The global network, human and machine, had closed the observational gap. The collaborative hunt had paid off, transforming a patch of random pixels into the confirmed return of an interstellar messenger. Comet Lemon, cataloged as C-2025A6, now rises quietly in the pre-dawn east, tracing a path through Cancer. For two weeks, its magnitude hovers between four and five, bright enough for binoculars, faint enough to reward patient sky watchers. Lemon's dust and gas offer a living laboratory, a chance for new observers to practice sky tracking and photometry before the next wave of cosmic visitors arrives. Each morning, amateur astronomers log coordinates and brightness, comparing notes across continents. The comet's arc is a gentle reminder. Discovery isn't reserved for professionals. A clear sky, a steady hand, and a simple chart are all it takes to join the search. On the horizon, another visitor approaches. Comet Swan, C-202R2, is predicted to appear in early 2026. Unlike Lemon, Swan carries a signature visible in ultraviolet, a vast hydrogen corona mapped by SOHO's Swan instrument. Scientists plan to compare Swan's brightness curve and fragmentation patterns to Lemon's, searching for clues in their outgassing and the way their crusts fracture under solar heat. The celestial calendar stretches further. April 2029 brings asteroid Apophis within 32,000 kilometers of Earth, visible as a moving point of light over Europe and Asia. September 2040 promises a rare planetary alignment, Mercury through Saturn clustered in a dawn arc. The 2060s may see the arrival of a mega comet, a true great comet event. And in 2177, Pluto completes its first full orbit since discovery, closing a symbolic loop in planetary science. Each event is a marker, a prompt to look up, and a reminder that the story of the sky is still being written. On October 29, 2025, Comet 3I-Atlas reached perihelion behind the Sun, just weeks after a rare trans-equatorial coronal hole unleashed a 700 km per second solar wind toward Earth. Magnetograms confirmed the negative open magnetic field leading to a perfect coupling with Earth's magnetosphere and triggering power grid disturbances and auroras as far south as Michigan. Despite a cluster of magnitude 7 earthquakes in the Pacific Rim during this period, USGS statistics show such events are within the yearly average, and mainstream science finds no proven link to solar activity. As of November 3rd, global teams using SOHO and PANSTARS began searching for signs of 3 bon I slash Atlas's survival, fragmentation, or disintegration. Its fate remains uncertain, awaiting further recovery images. Looking ahead, new comets like Lemon and Swan and milestones such as the 2029 Apophis flyby continue to remind us of the dynamic relationship between our sun and the objects that pass through its domain. The story of 3D slash Atlas underscores how much we still have to learn. From interstellar chemistry to the sun's power and its effects on Earth, 